Hi guys, it's Lana here. Welcome back to Lana Summer Summertime. So in today's video, it's still gonna be a curly hair video because this is Curly Fridays. If you guys didn't know, every Friday I'm making videos about curly hair, Curly Fridays. But this week I wanted to give it a little bit of a twist. So I wanna talk to you guys about how I started a curly hair YouTube channel. And I wanna tell you guys how you can do it as well. So whenever I do a Q&A or anything, this is one of the top questions I get. People are always asking, me how did I start my channel how did I find my niche how did I become an influencer so this really is gonna be about how I did it like how I started my channel but you guys know what I'm like you know that I always go into teaching mode so I am gonna be telling you guys how you can start your own curly hair YouTube channel or a hair and beauty channel or how you can be an influencer this video is sponsored by Skillshare I'm gonna talk about them a bit later on in the video but for right now just know that if you need help building skills in any area I've linked Skillshare in the the description box down below. Okay, so I have got all of my notes right here, but I was serious about this topic. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything out and I wanna give you all of the best tips so that you guys can be successful YouTubers if that's what you want. That kind of leads me into the first tip. My first tip for you is to kind of figure out, is this actually what you want to do? And I've put it at the start of the video because if you're not even completely sure about this, then I would encourage you to like go away and find out and then come back to this. How are you gonna find out if that's what you actually wanna do? I've broken it down into three tips. So firstly, what is it about being a YouTuber that interests you? Like be honest, is it the money and the glitz and the glam? In reality, there are a lot of jobs that provide a lot of money and <laughs> YouTube isn't always necessarily one of them and there are jobs like you know being a lawyer <laughs> being an investment banker being a doctor being a dentist I'd really only encourage pursuing YouTube as a career if the day-to-day -day of the job actually makes you happy you also need to find your niche like what is it that you enjoy talking about do you enjoy talking about your artwork that you create do you enjoy showing your makeup online do you enjoy hair care I make a curly hair YouTube channel because I enjoy talking about hair care when I very first started my channel I was going through my natural hair journey and, and I really wanted someone to share it with. I kind of just wanted to document it online because it was something that was quite exciting to me. Like my hair was finally growing, my curls were coming back. I was really excited, really wanted to talk about it. And that's why I have a channel. So yeah, finding out what interests you about YouTube, narrowing it down into a niche and then practicing. So have you actually ever tried making a YouTube video? Have you ever actually sat down in front of a camera, filmed a video and then tried to edit it, tried to upload it? Because you're not really gonna know if you want this for a career until you've done that process a few times and figured out whether that's actually an enjoyable process for you. So you gotta figure all of these things out and then we can move on to the next tips. <laughs> So what's the next step? Setting up a YouTube channel, branding it, coming up with channel names and artwork. Definitely have a little think about what you want your channel name to be. There is a part of your channel that you actually can't change once you've set it up. I did it when I had a boyfriend at the time and he had this really cute surname. I don't think he'll mind me saying this. His surname was Bug and their mum used to like call them by their names with like Bug at the end. You know, like a ladybug. So my channel name, I think, was actually Lana Ladybug. We split up, I wanted to change it. There's part of the channel that you can't change. I actually think that if you search youtube.com slash Lana Ladybug, it pulls up my channel because somewhere in the distant recesses of YouTube, it knows that that's my channel name and it can't be changed. I think that you can come up with a custom URL. So my custom URL is Lana Summer. We actually split up all on good terms. We're still friends now. Just imagine if that had been an awful breakup I might never want to look at my channel again definitely be smart about your channel names if you guys aren't like engaged and married <laughs> don't name it after your boyfriend try not to make it anything too childish I know it's like kind of difficult to know when you're really young like how do you know if something is childish or not try to avoid things like too many kisses or like any kisses like X's try not to put like numbers like zero one or zero zero princess and unicorns and that kind of thing because that can definitely kind of age your channel and if you're still doing your channel like years down the line that might be something that starts to really bother you so I would recommend definitely just using your name so once you have your channel name try to make it consistent across all of your platforms because inevitably your YouTube channel is going to become linked to your Instagram your TikTok and whatever other social platforms emerge in the world also a great idea if you can work your niche into your name like people like Lord DIY and Generation DIY they did a really great 
great job at really dominating the DIY niche. I'm not sure how well it worked for them further down the line when they started to want to move away from DIY, but for a long time, it really served them really well to have that in their name. Then come up with your color scheme and kind of your design style. It can really help your viewers to kind of identify your channel. There are a few people that I can think of straight off the top of my head that have really great color schemes. So you think Emma Chamberlain, you think like that dark green. Lisette has purple. There's somebody called Sunny Lena Doozy, I think that's her name. And her first name is Sunny. So she's really been working on that, like with the sunshine theme and her videos. When I think of her videos, I think of the color yellow. She always uses yellow in her thumbnails. It's been really hard for me to kind of like settle on a color. I should really do that though. <laughs> oh, and profile pictures. It's also a really great idea. If you could just take a nice high quality profile picture, have that for your YouTube, your Instagram and your TikTok and your Twitter and your Facebook. Try to make everything consistent across all platforms. All right, number three, equipment. So cameras, laptops, lighting. When it comes to filming YouTube videos, all you really need is something to record your videos on and an internet connection. So that could literally be your phone. It could be your tablet. You could make a whole YouTube video just on that one device alone and nothing else. When I first started my YouTube channel, I was convinced that I needed to buy a camera. I ended up buying one from eBay. It was by Canon, so I just assumed it would be great, but it was like one of their old power shot ones. It didn't have a flip up, it wasn't really like a video recording camera. Why did I buy it? I have no idea why I bought it. I just thought, oh, it's Canon. It must be good for YouTube videos. I could not see what I was filming. I remember sitting there trying to film the YouTube video with it and it was so difficult. I think I had the camera and then I had a chair behind the camera and a mirror on the chair so that I could see in the mirror what was in the lens. And I ended up just filming on the front camera of my phone. So the, the phone at the time was like a Samsung Galaxy Mini 3. I think they're on like Galaxy 20 now. Anyway, it was a really really old phone and the quality was really bad and the ratio was wrong. <laughs> Another thing, I'm really sorry for the quality of the video. I don't have a really good camera. Um, maybe if I start doing this a little bit more regularly, then I might be inclined to, you know, go out and purchase a better camera. Let's get into the video. I edited it, edited it, I edited it, it. huh? Edited it. Is this English? I edited it. I used Windows Movie Maker to edit that. Huh. Which was just the standard video editing program that came on Windows laptops at the time. And it did really well. That's what actually kickstarted my channel. People liked that video because it had some good information in it. It's a good idea to focus on the information rather than going out and getting all of this expensive equipment right away. But if you're really ready to go with this, then there are some pieces of equipment that I do recommend. The first thing would be my camera. So the camera that I'm filming on right now is a Canon G7 7X Mark III. So it's essentially a vlogging camera, but I like to use it for even my sit down videos. In there, I have a memory card. I have tons of memory cards. If you guys don't have memory cards, definitely go out and get them. Um, like 128 gig, 256 gig memory cards because you need the space. It's on a tripod as well. But I'm yet to find the perfect tripod. They all kind of seem quite flimsy and they break a lot, but I will link this tripod in there because this is the one that I've had the longest. I'm also using a microphone. I hope that you guys can tell the difference in the sound quality of my videos in the past couple of months or so, because I have finally started using my Rode shotgun microphone. I'm also using a ring light. I've got it on like a really, really low setting right now. I also upgraded my laptop to a MacBook years ago now because the laptop that I was using, it definitely wasn't designed for all of that editing that I was doing. It would crash constantly. I'd constantly lose work and lose videos and it was so frustrating. Okay, we're on to point number four, building a schedule. Schedule. Schedule one. Okay, so by this time, you should have some idea of the videos that you're making. You should be able to figure out how long it takes you to make those videos and how long it takes you to edit them. It's gonna be different for everybody. Some people are making like some really high quality documentary style videos that might take them a month to shoot and a month to edit. They might need a whole team of people to do it and they might only release a video a few times a year. I know a few channels like that, they do really well because that's what their audience expects of them. And that's one of the key key points of this building a schedule. Like what is your audience going to expect from you? Is it possible for you to create kind of a low quality, low budget, low effort video and put that out once every six months and your audience is gonna be okay with that? 
Probably not. It really helps if you can be consistent. So you might be thinking that you wanna make a YouTube video once a week, and I think that's great. As a subscriber, you wanna know that there's gonna be content there, so you don't wanna like see one video that you liked, go over to their channel and realize that's the only video they've ever made, or they've only ever made two videos and they were six months apart. Older channels can kind of get away with it because if you already have a backlog of like 300 videos, then someone coming to your channel is gonna see those 300 videos and then less likely to start looking at the, the gaps between the videos and that kind of thing. Like don't just look at really well-established YouTubers and think that you can be kind of as relaxed as they are about their schedule because there is a reason why they can be more relaxed. So if you do decide that you want to do once a week that's great but you're going to need to have some ideas. Maybe start keeping a notebook or keep it in your notes app just a list of video ideas and video topics. You can look at trending topics just by being present in your niche so watching videos in your niche, watching curly hair videos, following curly hair hashtags on Instagram. It also really helps if you go onto Google Trends as well. You can have a look at Google Trends and see was trending. Okay, that kind of leads me into point number five. So I didn't realize that SEO was gonna be such a big part of what I do in my daily work. But now we're getting serious. So SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Oh, YouTube is a search engine. It's owned by Google and it's the second largest search engine in the world after Google. So they've really nailed down on that search engine function and you need to know how search engines work in order to get your videos seen using keywords in your titles and using keywords in your videos and using keywords in your descriptions and that kind of thing. All of that is SEO, but you can definitely make it more. <laughs> you can definitely do more with it. I was actually able to level up my curly hair channel a lot using SEO practices that I learned through Skillshare courses. So Skillshare is an online learning platform for anyone who wants to build skills in so many areas like this, like SEO, like business, but also in things like art and crafts and photography. They are optimized for learning, so they're ad-free. You're not going to get interrupted with commercial breaks or anything like that. The classes all come from verified teachers or professionals professionals or experts in the fields that you're trying to study in. I've been using Skillshare for a couple of years now. I've really been enjoying this series by MKBHD. It's YouTube success, script, shoot and edit with a little bit of a focus on SEO. I've just been able to learn so much. The first thousand people to click the link in my description will receive a free month of Skillshare premium membership. And not to worry if you don't get there in time because Skillshare is only around $10 a month. Number six, build a community of other creative people around you. Make friends with other YouTubers. You are doing all of your SEO and by this point, I hope that you guys are doing so, so well. You know, when I was very first starting out, I would follow all of the other curly hair influencers. Like we called them curly hair gurus at the time. I don't really know if people do that anymore. I would support all of their work. I would always be there liking and commenting. And through these friendships, we were able to also organize some collaborations. I think something that a lot of YouTubers don't talk about enough is the fact that YouTube as a career is a very solitary one. I film alone, I edit alone, I don't have any colleagues, I don't have a manager, I don't have an agent, I don't have an editor. Everything that I do for work, I do 100% alone. That can actually get to you. It's great to be independent, but sometimes you do just need a little bit of support. It's great to just have people that you can share tips with, share advice with. A lot of people who don't do this job aren't really gonna understand the struggles that come with it. So it's really just great to have people who understand what your job is like. So here in London, they actually have the YouTube headquarters and pre-pandemic, they would always be doing amazing things. Like they would hold events like Halloween parties, Christmas parties. The Christmas parties were always amazing. I'm pretty sure they used to give out awards at the end of the year and stuff. Really great opportunity to meet like-minded people. And they would do lessons and classes. So I think I went to a Final Cut Pro editing course there and I met some great people there that I'm still friends with now. Oh, I went to brand events there where I would meet brands and have the chance to pitch ideas to brands for collaborations. If you know of anything like that, then definitely sign up. Number seven. So I spent a long time just then talking about building a community of other creators because it's really helpful. But building the community of your viewers and your subscribers, when they're building a YouTube channel, it's not just numbers. Every single one of those numbers is a person and you need to find a way to connect with that person and just respect that person and be grateful for that person for hitting subscribe or leaving a comment or hitting the like button. Just try to reply to those comments. Spend 
some time with these people who are spending their time on you. If I think of like my favorite YouTubers ever, the people that I've continued to follow for years, it's probably because they responded to my comment once, like years ago. And now I feel like we're friends. <laughs> I ask you to go back to point number one and like ask, what is your interest in doing this? Like, are you actually interested in building a community? Like when I look back on why I started my channel, like yes, I wanted to share my story, but I was also very lonely. <laughs> No one else was gonna listen to me talking about it. I really wanted friends, I really wanted a community, and that's what I got. <laughs> okay, guys, we're on number eight about why, how you should start a curly hair YouTube channel. Number eight, brand collaborations. Should have mentioned earlier on that you don't need to do brand collaborations to make money with YouTube, especially because YouTube, you can make AdSense, Google AdSense, and that's all based on your views. You just need to reach a certain threshold before you can turn AdSense on. Brand collaborations can really take your channel up and not, they can really help you to reinvest back into your channel, get better equipment. You might be able to leave your job and start committing more time to this and that kind of thing. So brand collaborations can be really, really, really helpful to a lot of people. So how do you get them? Well, when I was first starting out, I would reach out to brands myself. I would reach out to them on Instagram. I'd send them a DM, just introduce myself, let them know what kind of videos I make and how I think I can help them. The good brands are the ones that will offer you payment for your work. I think there's a lot of shame with YouTubers, like a lot of YouTubers kind of feel like ashamed of accepting payment for the work that they do and that kind of thing, which I think is ridiculous. It's 2022, I think that we can all acknowledge that things like videography, editing, and that kind of thing, these are real, jobs so you deserve to be paid for your time especially because you are now an expert in your field you've got your channel set up you've been making videos you've got subscribers it adds value to the work that you're doing because not only have you proven that you're good at it but you've proven that you kind of have influence and you definitely need to learn how to value your time then you can start to add more value and you can start to increase your fee and also just try to keep an eye out for which ones might be trying to scam you the worst ones are the ones who say oh we want to give you like a 30 percent discount and we want you to post about it you have to post about it oh, that's definitely a scam essentially they want you to pay them and they're going to get a free advert out of it it makes no sense and brands really bug me when they do that because they are definitely taking advantage of new channels and people who haven't really learned the ropes yet number nine Okay, number nine in how to make a curly hair channel or a hair and beauty channel is just some helpful tools. So these are actually like, some of them are free and some of them you can pay for. I've listed here some of the tools that I use. One of the first ones is Be Funky. It's a free website that you can just make thumbnails on. They have a lot of functions on there. I've been using it for a really long time. So the way that I do it is I usually just make the thumbnail on there and then I move the thumbnail to my phone and I do some more edits and I do those on Pixar and Facetune. So Pixart just has like some really good blurring functions. You can pixelate things, you can, you know, change the background and that kind of thing. So I really like Pixart for that. Facetune is just really easy to kind of brighten things or, you know, add a little bit of aesthetic to a thumbnail. Okay, so there's another website called Thematic and they have a lot of copyright free music. They kind of sound like songs that you know. So you think you're listening to like a charting pop song, but it's a copyright free song that I got from Thematic. And then for things like SEO, I do use Google Trends and TubeBuddy. So TubeBuddy can really just help to show you what other people are using as their tags and that kind of thing and just show you how different search terms are performing and that kind of thing. Google Trends is just a really great way to find what's trending. So I will leave all of those links in the description box down below. So I think I was going to talk about how I started my curly hair business as well, but I think this video has been so long that I'm going to have to leave that to another video. So if you guys want to know how I launched a curly hair business, my curly hair business is Hedgy Hair. I make hair accessories and we sell them worldwide. If you guys want to know how I did that, then definitely let me know in the comment section. I really don't know how well this video is going to do. Like, I don't know if you guys care about this kind of thing on here, but I just thought it'd be a nice spin for Curly Fridays. Oh my gosh, that was actually a really long video. That took me way longer to film than I thought it would. That is how I started my YouTube channel. If you guys have a passion for curly hair or you want to make a hair and beauty channel or you want to document your natural hair journey, I really hope that this video is helpful to you guys. And remember, if you guys do want to learn something, if you guys are interested in any of the skills that I've mentioned, then you can check out Skillshare. It's in the description box down below. So that is everything from me. Good luck, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.